Cool. I have a thumbs up for co consent to be recorded. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our student activities and funding board coordinator, Mary Lisa Wood, who will be asking the questions for our candidates today. Our candidates do also have the questions in front of them. Um, so if you need it to reference, feel free to do so. Any questions from our candidates before we commence the debate? None. Just one question. I'm going to be asking the questions, right? Take it back. Pamela Kirshner, the office manager for the Office of Student Life, will be asking the questions, and Mary Lisa Wood will be your timekeeper um, and also your question asker for any questions that come through the Zoom. Okay, Great. fabulous. Thanks for that check. Thank um, and without further ado, we are recording. Pam, take it away. Great. Thank you so much. First question, since its founding in, in 1913, Cal Poly Humboldt has devoted itself to helping create a more sustainable world. Many of our students are passionate about this topic, and it is one reason we have such a high enrollment in the natural sciences. We even have organizations on campus like CCAT and RAP that promote more sustainability lifestyles. With that being said, Cal Poly does have its flaws, such as the Coca-Cola contract that continuously brought in plastic. Oh, erase all that. Just <laughs> said <laughs> no you warmed up. Warmed up. Good Instead of the first yeah. question. <laughs> okay, so you kind of have a preview of what the first question is. Actually, what we're going to do is have Candidate Guerrero, go first with a three-minute opening statement. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so, hello, my name is Juan Giovanni Guerrero. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm a Chicano from San Diego, and my major is environmental science and management. I've been here since freshman year, for, so for quite a bit, and I've had my first share of challenges. And I'm tired. I am tired. It's not easy. I, as a first gen student, I, as soon as I signed up to come to a four year university, the experience that I signed up for is to figure it, it all out on my own, such as my personal finances. My, my family is a working class household. Um, and, and so I've had to figure out how I'm going to feed myself every day, how I'm going to have a roof over my head every day. And as a result, I currently work three jobs outside of attending school as a full time student. And I'm tired. I really am, but none of that really matters because I will not rest. I will not rest until I have succeeded in acquiring my four-year degree. And that is my mission. That's what I came here to do, and that's what, what I will do. And so I, I offer the, the, these expressions because I know that some of you here and others that are not here or that are virtual, um, can resonate with some aspect of the um, expressions that I've, I've just given, such as um, it's hard, that it's tiring, it's exhausting, time consuming. Um, but, but your persistence to uplift yourself and your family's social mobility outweighs any obstacle that is thrown in your way. And that's something that I admire. And I think that's, that's something that as a university, we should be honoring. And that, that, that's why I don't associate students because I wanna see all of you here, all of you there. I wanna see all of you guys graduate. I wanna graduate with you. I wanna to graduate together. I wanna to walk that stage together. Um, and so I don't associate students move our institution in, in a direction that is equitable for students. Because I want you, as I expressed, to require your, your degree and make it less stressful as possible. To be clear, I'm not running to fill your mind with hopeless endeavors and empty promises. To tell you that as president, I will require this or that. And to come back in a year and tell you that I'm working on it, I can't do that. My campaign is about grounding ourselves on the current problems we face on this campus. And I want to help you to alleviate your financial uh, endeavors by lessening the, the structural and financial burdens that this university places on the backs of students. That's why I'm running for president, and I hope that I have your confidence to lead our student association. So, so a better place. Thank you. All right, candidate Markham, it's your turn. You have three minutes for an opening statement. Thank you very much. 
For those of you that are not familiar with me, my name is Chase Markham. I'm currently one of your student leaders. Um, last semester, I was a student affairs vice president. This semester, I'm the administrative vice president. And um, I'm fortunate enough to work um, with one of our um, other great representatives here, Wanji um, Bonnie Guerrero. I came here to what was then Humboldt State University from the Philippines. Well over a year ago, this is my fourth semester now. Um, that was the most profound experience um, being able to reconnect with um, my family there, the culture there, and uh, learn my language. But when I came here, I had one of my other most greatest profound experiences in, in my life. Um, I came during the pandemic and it was very um, strange situation, um, but I did my best to um, try and help resolve what I thought was missing, which was unity, family, students sitting down with each other, um, breaking bread with, the other, with one another. Um, and for the first semester or so, it, it was quite difficult, but we have made so much progress together. And my apologies, I may not be the most eloquent speaker, um, but I feel like my story and my leadership is shown through my actions. And I feel like most that have come to know me know that my actions come from a place um, that is true, that is a place of integrity, and that is a place of uh, empowering my fellow peers, my fellow students, and uplifting them and amplifying their voices. And if I intend to do that as your president if elected, and I just want to say thank you for everybody because you've really um, helped me grow. Uh, and you've helped me become a better leader. Um, I couldn't have done it without everybody here, everybody at this university in all sectors. And um, I'm just very appreciative of the gratitude and looking forward to continuing um, this journey together. Okay, back to the first question, and we'll reread it, but this one faster. Okay. <laughs> Since its founding in 1913, Cal Poly has devoted itself to helping create a more sustainable world. Many of our students are passionate about this topic, and it is one reason we have such a high enrollment in natural sciences. We even have organizations on campus like CCAT and RAP that promote more sustainable lifestyles. With that being said, Cal Poly does have its flaws, such as the Coca-Cola contract that continuously brought in plastic bottles in large quantities to be distributed in locations throughout the campus, such as the depot, the cupboard, the marketplace, the J Kitchen. What are your thoughts on how our school could be more sustainable? What steps would you take as the president of Cal Poly Humboldt to continue pushing toward a more sustainable university. Candidate Markham, you, you may answer first. Well, as president of Cal Poly Humble, I didn't know I was coming for a President Jackson's position, but <laughs> <laughs> associated <laughs> students president, that's definitely it. But <laughs> I'm totally joking. But um, yeah, so I think this is actually um, one of our most important questions. And it also connects us back to um, our history which in um, 1913, Humboldt State Natural School was the name of this university, and it was an all women's school. The first um, graduating class was 15 women. And we are now the first generation of Cal Poly Humboldt. What will we do? What will our story be? We have some great programs, some great examples like CCAT, 
um, like rap, that we can and should collaborate with, that we should get the ideas with, because um, Gio or myself and the other leaders, we cannot do it on our own. We need to bring in all of these great departments that we have, all of these great students and their ingenuity and their ideas um, into this process, into um, student leadership, um, because it's when we utilize teamwork and we utilize unifying um, energies and, and positivity that real change um, comes about. Um, it is not when it is just one individual that has a great idea that um, can never really come to fruition and bear fruit in a productive way. It is when um, we all um, hand in hand um, working together. And I referenced the all women's school because in this leadership position, I was inspired by three great um, women leaders Mayuli Payar, Rosa Granados, and Lisbeth Cano Sanchez have been some of my greatest sources um, within this um, organization and within my, um, my um, role as a student leader. So I really want to give gratitude and thanks to women and women leaders um, that if it was not for them, I would in no way be able to be sitting in front of all of you today. So, thank you. Sure, so um, in terms of the Coca-Cola contract, I would love to gather what students think about the contract and whether it fits our values um, uh, as Cal Poly Humble. And if not, like, what sort of action um, do we need to take in order to uh, we re, 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 um, align ourselves with our university values. So, so definitely we'd love to get some more perspective and insight on that. Um, so in terms of sustainability, there, there, there's three concepts there. There's, there's the environmental, economical, and social uh, concept of, of, of uh, sustainability that, that ties sustainability together. And so I think a really big issue on this campus that ties all three is parking. Um, one of the things on my agenda agenda to address is accessibility to student parking. Um, and I think that we we can definitely expand carpooling links on this university and, and offer incentives to students um, so that so that they call carpooling with, with students, such as um, offering a lower uh, parking pass for students who carpool and having some sort of system to like verify that. Um, and, and, and I think our university can also um, offset the upfront costs with like biking. I, I myself like struggle to get into biking because you know it's, it's a big upfront investment. Like who, who has the money to pay like $400 to bike to campus? Um, you know, over the long run, it's a great investment, but upfront, it, it's just a big cost. Um, and, and so um, my, my, other, my other point direction towards sustainability is that I think our student leaders, um, as associate students, we should allow our, our student leaders on campus and student advocates to lead. Um, our own associate students, we've, we've, we've really been supportive of sustainability projects on this campus. Um, for example, um, a student approached associate students to to support the Indigenous Food Sovereignty Lab um, on this campus. I was one of the representatives who voted in favor of the association supporting that and bringing that to admin. And so I think that by, uh, listening to our students' ideas and then also put, pushing that front and center to administrators that, hey, this is what we want to see out of our campus, um, that, uh, that that's that's what our role um, should, should really uh, continue to be, supporting our students and their ideas and their creativity. Thank you. Thank you. So the next question actually has three parts and you all have it in front of you, but I'll let me read it for everyone else. Why did you choose to get involved in this type of work and how have you developed as a leader? And then what are some ways you would like to continue to develop? And Ken Vigoretto, you go first. Sure. So the first thing I'm going to point towards is what I've expressed before are my experiences. Like uh, my experiences 
on this campus, I think allows me to um, have a sense of solidarity um, with the struggles that our students are, are coming onto this campus. And also it's like personal for me. So like, like I, I want to address um, the, the, the burdens that students are facing because those are burdens that I faced before. But there's students who out there that, that have faced, you know, who have, who have harder, had it harder than I have had it for sure. Um, so uh, I've, I've uh, ever since coming to, to this university, I've, I've always wanted to help people in some sort of capacity. And I think that capacity has sort of evolved to pushing the institution um, to meet students where they're at. Uh, so 50% of our students have a zero expected family contribution on their FAFSA, which means they have the most dire need. And so, um, as I mentioned, like we need to be lifting burdens placed on students' backs and not placing them there. Um, so I see the, the president's role as dealing with, with all the in, little intricacies in between so that it's smoother sailing from point A to point B graduation. Um, and for example, like making sure our tuition in 20 years is the same as it is today and not goddamn any higher. Um, making sure that our university isn't charging students $40 um, or violating parking parking rules because um, that's gone down too high, bringing down the free parking hours from 8 to 10 p.m. down to 8 to 5 p.m. so that students can access the resources on this campus and go home safely. Um, and so, uh, that's why I chose this type of work is to like help people. Um, and as a student leader, the like, greatest lesson I've come to learn is the power of like stopping and listening to people. It's, it's a very impactful thing. Like I believe in and uh, not leading, not not leading people, but moving together with people, um, approaching difficult situations collaboratively and collectively. Um, and that's how I've developed, and I will definitely continue to develop because I, I don't know everything. Um, so thank you. Candidate Markham. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so, when I came into this role, um, when I came to Humboldt, I had never been involved in any type of politics or leadership um type roles such as this whether it be in the student setting or educational setting public setting um but i saw the void that was there for a leader and leaders that may have never been able to step in those type of positions do so now because we needed different ideas and different methodologies and non-conventional solutions to traditional problems that have really been around forever, but have never had any type of lasting resolve in um, what was priorly proposed to fix these problems. Um, regards to developing um, as a leader, it really has um, those three um, leaders that I mentioned earlier are the ones that um, really gave me a firm foundation along with some of my um, wonderful um, presidential advisor associates that have given me a foundation and a family to be a part of when I had none here. Um, for example, my Uli, she really taught me a lot of compassion and how to interact um, in a political realm um, when I had no idea or had no tools to be able to navigate on this type of realm. So she really laid a firm foundation for me. Um, Rosa, she uh, 
helps me learn uh, determination, dedication, ingenuity, and creativity um, in everything that is involved in representation of people. Um, and she's been a great source of um, great source of my inspiration. Liz has also been really um, one of my sources of figuring out um, how to be compassionate, um, genuine, and how to have strength against all odds. So that being said, um, it is because of all of you that I'm sitting where I am today. And I'm strong enough, regardless of all of the issues that we faced last semester and this semester. So thank you. Thank you. How will you deal with the uncomfortable moments in your career as Cal Poly's Cal Poly Humboldt student president? What will you do when you feel that you're not being heard? And how will you get people together to decide on important issues? And candidate Malcolm, you get to go first on this one. Okay. So, uncomfortable moments. How will I deal with them? I will not um, deal with uncomfortable moments. We will deal with uncomfortable moments because um, it is not I that is now um, uncomfortable in any situation because we have really um, weathered some rigorous storms and some um, very um, diverse situations that have, I think have strengthened a lot of the student leaders. And um, now I stand firm in my footing and in my foundation for my ability to um, assist all of those that were in our shoes before in their uncomfortable situations. Um, the same goes for the next question, which is uh, being unheard. Um, now that I understand how the system works, how the different power dynamics interact, um, I have no issue going into these rooms, going into these meetings, these offices where I know need to be um, gone into to resolve a whole host of situations and problems that students face. Um, so I, I have no issue having my voice heard and in my security having my voice heard, but it is we that it is us that need to make sure that our voices are heard. And that's what I intend to do is to uplift all of those that have either been silenced or that have not yet found their voice. And I intend to amplify their voices and strengthen their foundation and resolve so they have a firm place, such as I do now, to go into those rooms, to go into those meetings, to go into those offices. And I will go side by side with them to make sure that they have a place with their voices, their opinions, their ideals, their um, whatever that they want to see change or that they need um, to see for their futures and their opportunities that they have here. Uh, make sure that their voices are heard. And that's what is now important. So it is not I, it is us and we that will be represented moving forward. Thank you. Sure, so I, I just first want to state that I really value working with people in a respective, collaborative manner. Um, but I am also an advocate, so it, it, it's sometimes really hard to move the institution to, to change into a certain direction, very, very hard sometimes. So I do uh, believe sometimes it's necessary to burn the house down um, when, when the institution refuses to move in the right direction. Um, I recall, uh, based on one of my experiences, um, formerly, I reached out to the formerly impeached president on um, 
my concern over how we were using uh, this the space in Nelson Hall West. We had like a floor plan planned out. Um, we, we were gonna like, I mean, we're, we're going to move programs into that space. And one of the things I brought up was like, oh, hey, can we do something for students like emergency housing or something that helps to uh, um, alleviate, alleviate some sort of stress off, off of students? Um, and I was not heard in that conversation. Um, and so what I did was reached out to the Lumberjack. I, would have, I reached out to Ella from Lumberjack as well. And I was like, hey, here's a floor plan. Like, this is what Associated Students is planning. This is what I think should happen. And I posted that like on my Instagram and I got some pretty good reception from, from that. And after taking that action, like finally I, I was I was taken seriously and, and, and um, my concerns were, were taken seriously as well. And so um, and so uh, if I'm not being heard, like my, my, my first go-to is to like form collaborations and, and to form coalitions just so that our voice is louder um, rather than, than ignored. Uh, but and be in the appropriate space, um, and then if if all else fails, as Adele as Adele once said, um, set fire to the rain. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I also enjoy like listening to people. I recall listening with Chase to go over committee compensation for six hours on a Sunday, um, and so I think by like listening to um, people and bridge, bridging um, ideas together. That'll help me to get people to decide on issues together. Um, something that Liz has taught me as president is that uh, if if the student body, um, if it's awkward between you and the student body, like then you're not doing your job right. Like like reassess yourself and your approach and what you're doing, and um, go from there. Thank you. Our next question is, what are your visions, hopes for Cal Poly Humboldt and your goals for associated students? And candidate Guerrero, you can go first on this one. Oh man. Um, Big question. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and you know, I think I can speak for all, of, like for a good portion of us. Um, I, I envision at our university, um, or I should say, I envision the future that BIPOC students, first gen students, can come to this university, can come to this campus, and not have to worry about where they'll sleep or eat. I envision students able to fully focus on their courses um, rather than work outside of school and dedicate a lot of time to working instead of, their, instead of on their coursework. I envision that students will be able to have access to opportunities outside of the classroom, um, have access to spaces of comfort, spaces of, of where they can connect with people. Um, and I envision that this university to be a place where students want to come here, and students want to stay here. And when students do come in, when students do, do stay, that they're successful in the pursuit of success here. And lastly, I really envision our university being a game changer for the social mobility of BIPOC students. And I, and I really do hope that our university gets to that point at some point. It's a rough, rough road ahead, very, very long road ahead, um, but I'm truly hopeful. And I, you know, as, as for, for AS, in terms of what I envision for AS and, and what I want to work, work on with AS is um, really connecting with like the student body. Like a lot of people don't know like what the heck associate students is. Um, and I think that that's something that, that we should definitely address. Um, and it probably won't be something that we'll be able to fix in a year, but, but you know, we can get started on now. Um, and as a place, A place where students are comfortable to come to associate students to advocate on, on their needs to administrators. That's what I envision for our university and for associate students. Candidate Markham. Thank you. So first and foremost, I envision Cal Poly Humboldt and associate students um, as one because we are a big family. And um, if we are working together and 
collaboration in a collective manner, that is when um, the real change happens. Um, I envision an environment at this university where the students feel safe, healthy, inspired, and feel as such that their voices are heard and that they can affect the change that they want to see. I also envision a university that because is a polytechnic now, obviously will have great programs in the sciences, but will also, and more importantly, stay true to the spirit and nature in which this university rose up out of with robust arts programs, because that's really where um, I think a lot of students here flourish and enjoy. Um, so we need to make sure that we keep that in our journey as a polytechnic into the future. And that is why one of the reasons associated students is so important because the students have the ability to not only make sure that the arts stay strong here, but that new programs in the arts are developed within such things as university committees, where students should begin and have seats to be seated in, but unfortunately have not been. We need to be in those rooms and having those conversations. I also envision a university where people from all over the world aspire to come for all of the great programs that we have and all of the great things that Humboldt County in general has to offer. So with that being said, I think that our future is very bright if we are involved and if we work together, then we can determine what that future looks like. Just a uh, programming note here, we have been switching the order of how you answered. The next one looks like it did not get, are you both okay with uh, whatever is on this paper as far as the order? Okay, great. Um, if the university mascot comes back as a major conversation on campus, how will you navigate this cause? And for this, in, in our uh, agenda here, we're allowing Candidate Guerrero to go first. Sure. So I think that a great model that we should go about that is a model highlighted by President Cano Sanchez. Um, with her work in El Centro, she developed a um, mural committee. Uh, um, and so that mural committee worked with, with, with campus to acquire space um, to delegate a um, campus mural. And then reached out to this uh, student body artists um, to get like uh, sample um, uh, artwork to be voted on to, to see what, what the student body like wanted um, as an art piece, and then we voted on on those uh, artworks from, from from students. So her approach was like really student centered and really focused on um, highlighting student artwork. And so I think that uh, if, if the conversation about the mascot comes up again, that that approach should, should be really, really similar, where we're reaching out to the campus community in terms of like what sort of mascot they want to see. Because at the end of the, end of the day, our mascot should not be driven by um, what, what, what's going to get us the most money. Like that's not what it should be driven by. It should be driven by what do students want to see, what do students feel represent them on this campus. Um, and so I would really uh, approach that in a similar manner as President Gano did. And Thank you. So first and foremost, I do want to say that um, regardless of 
personal opinions on this matter, I think the most important thing is to let the people be in power and have their voice um, be able to be integrated into the system for this type of topic. Um, there are many tools students have, whether they're a part of this student government or not, that I don't know if a lot of folks know about. But for example, if students were interested in this topic, they could get a small percentage of the student population to sign a petition and could affect change in this, for this exact type of purpose, um, if they so choose. Um, it would go on a ballot, the students would vote on it, and if the students voted on it, it would happen. So whether you're a part of this student government or not, you can affect change um, by simple process and procedure and um, having an informed student body. Secondly, I would really like to chop, um, tap into some of Rosa's energy again. And she said something in one of our meetings and she said about this topic, she said, us as athletes, we have the saying in regards to the, the, the lung, our mascot, the lumberjack, um, which is we utilize it in, in a symbolic way. And we wake up early every morning and say, we're going to go chop wood. And that's their saying is chop wood. And they use it as, a, as, a, as an, empower, an empowering symbolism um, to do that every day, day in and day out. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen in the paper over and over again, breaking records across the nation. And she's a great source of inspiration. And I, and I understand that symbolism of, um, that they have, and they use it as a great source of energy and pride. Um, also, the Marching Lumberjacks, one of our great um, student organizations that have been here for a long time and have renowned in many different countries, um, they utilize it as well as one of those sources of inspiration. And um, a lot of you know as well that we have a wonderful um, newspaper here, the Lumberjack. They also um, use our mascot as a source of inspiration and drive in obtaining and finding success in the pursuits. So regardless of personal opinion, we should take all of those um, ideals into um, consideration when addressing this matter. Thank you. The next question, how will you facilitate student communication that is supposed to inform your decision-making? Sending emails is great, but we all know too well that they often render a low amount of participation from, from students. So as Associated Student President of Cal Poly Humble, how will you inform outreach? And can you give um, examples of how you've done community outreach in the past? If, then candidate Markham, you can go first. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. So, I can answer this question because a lot of you see me day in and day out. I walk with you across campus. I walk with you to class. I stand with you in the trials and tribulations that you face in everyday life um, and resolving those issues. I take your hands in times of need. I break bread with you in the J, in the depot, and I sit down um, and we eat together and we talk together and we conversate about what's happening here at the university and what you're facing on individual levels and what we are facing as a family here at Cal Poly Humboldt. So my tact from the beginning and will continue to be to be here with you side by side 
hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, and face whatever storms that might come our way in hopes that we uh, um, will see clear skies, positive outcomes, and find uh, everlasting solutions to some of those um, problems that we face moving out of this um, very difficult times that we find ourselves in. In regards to um, moving forward with this, I just furthermore intend to um, make myself accessible to the greatest degree possible as, as I feel as though I've, I've um, attempted to do to the best of my degree, which is speak with, conversate with anyone that is willing to speak with me and conversate with me or that needs help resolving problems or issues or um, I'll be in the office, um, you can find there. Um, I'll be walking across campus, stop me if you see me. Um, I give out my telephone number, direct line often and email it, whatever form of communication that is best suitable for um, all of you you will be able to access me and I will go with you into any situation that you may face um, so that you do not have to face it alone. That's how I tend to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Can we sure, so I believe that the best approach is to go where students are, to go to students' faces, spaces like the Women's Resource Center, the RAC, CCAT, um, and to uh, talk to those students and gather their, their input on certain things that we're working on. Like, for example, um, I really want to go to our core, core programs. Um, so our different student spaces on, on campus, like the Career Resource Center, and ask them, like, what do they think about um, my proposal to make sure that associate students is permanently funding the student positions that we, that we fund so that they aren't um, on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, so some some examples of like some outreach that, that I've done in the past is um, in the beginning of the semester, I went to um, the wrap house to talk with anyone that was there on their experience with um, associate students. Um, when I was the external affairs representative about two years ago or a year and a half ago, um, I was part of the Cal State Student Association, which is like student government, but, but it's the student government of student governments. So it's like the student government for all campuses. And um, I recall uh, people there not wanting to touch the, on the subject of um, UPD because that, um, that was a time when um, uh, students were advocating for uh, changes in UPD or reallocation of funds and funding. And so I reached out to advocacy groups such as um, Students for Quality Education. So I get, get their input on that and whether that, that should be something that um, that organization should align itself with. Um, and so I like throughout associate students, like I, I have, have a well demonstrated history of um, meeting people where, where they're at. Um, so I really want to continue continue that approach, but also I think that um, it's not enough and that we need, we need to up our game. And so taking a look at our structure in terms of um, where can we be, like what can we do to make it our job to be where students are. Um, and so that's how I would uh, gather student input and feedback. Um, and like, like I demonstrated before, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty available, make myself available when needed. So I'm just sitting down with Chase for six hours to go over, go over a, a proposal. Pam, I always ask that we switch to closing statements. Okay. We are going to skip the uh, question number seven and go on to closing statements and, um, on the order that we have here on the agenda. Um, Ken and Martha, you have three minutes for your closing statement, and then Ken and Guerrero, you have three minutes as well. Thank you. It is true that the associated students, the great students of this university, 
were dealt a devastating blow. We lost three, four of our most critical components, our most critical leaders um, in this past year. We've lost our, our um, previous ED. Um, our organization and the student voice in general um, crumbled. But if you look closely at the ashes, there's something grumbling there. There's plumes rising from that pile. There's a phoenix waiting to spread its wings and descend. And when we, hand in hand, stand together, that phoenix will rise. And it's coming very soon. I want to read something because I don't know if they will have a chance or opportunity to, to. But this is the final statement of Rosa Granados before she um, moves on to hopefully bigger and better, more productive, positive situations for her. Thank you, ancestors of the Wiat land. I stand with honor to uplift, advocate, motivate, and heal through the power of those who come before us. I acknowledge the Wiat tribes, elders, youth, and families. I acknowledge our missing indigenous women and women who have been violently assaulted. I acknowledge our waters, fishes, rivers, and plants that have, have rooted us in our ancient paths to feed the animals who then give to us and protect the forest and everything living. I thank our ancestors for allowing me to be here today I thank them for the strength that has carried me through this path we call life. Thank you, Rosa. So I'll go ahead and quote the words of John Lewis. Do not get lost in the sea of despair. Be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month or a year. It is a struggle of a lifetime. Never be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And so I'll, I'll leave off there and I hope that I have your confidence to advocate with you and to elevate your voice and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, at this point, Mary Lisa, do we have any questions in the um, chat? We have just one. Okay. Do we have time for, for questions? Um, it looks like we have enough time, probably just barely enough. Okay. okay. Are there any questions from the audience before we go to the question in the chat? Okay. Okay. I'm trying to find it. One second. Okay. So, um, an individual has asked, would it be possible to talk about the changing the mascot from being a white man to something that is more non-binary or even just a tree that has no gender or ethnicity? I think a big problem people have with Lucky is that he is a white man at a Hispanic serving institution on indigenous land. I believe we touched upon that in a theoretical question about how you would, uh, you know, approach the conversation if it came up again. Um, do you want to have maybe a minute each to address this? Sure. 
Can I go first? Sure. Awesome. I think that we can absolutely change that. Like that is definitely a problem. That mascot is definitely something that we should change. Um, in my very biased opinion. <laughs> Um, you know, because 50% or almost 50% of the students that go to this campus are um, BIPOC students. And so, like, the, like, that's not very reflective of our campus community either. Um, and so, um, if, if that's what the student body wants to see get changed, and it's something that I've continuously um, heard students advocating to get changed, that's something that we most certainly should push to um, reflect the values of our campus community. Thank you, Marco. Oh, thank you very much. So, in regards to this question, um, I will answer it in a similar way that I've always answered it. And with anything of this nature that is confronted to be changed, you might see often um, land acknowledgement here. Um, in a lot of different places and people's emails and people's um, um, flyers and, and whatnot. Um, but if we are going to answer a question such as this and make such a dramatic change, then maybe we should do it in collaboration and with the acknowledgement that we are on the We Are Plan and they should be the ones to decide what any new mascot or any new change that may come about. So um, if this is something that is um, desired uh, by the students to be changed, then first and foremost, we should ask the people in which we currently find ourselves on their land. So that is, what I would advise if that was a situation that was to be proposed. Thank you. Well, thank you to our candidates today for your presentation and your conversation. Uh, it was a really great dialogue. Um, if they have any questions that they wanna follow up with you on, or if they wanna know more about your platform, is there a place that they can get that information? Sure. They can email me at cam302 at humble.edu. They can call or text me at 707-328-2429. They can find me during office hours on Mondays, 10 to 12, and often extended um, past that. Um, I will make myself available at any moment, any time. All y'all have to do is reach out. Um, so for me, my, my email is jwg33 at, at humble.edu. Um, you, you can also find me on campus at El Centro from, uh, on Mondays from uh, 10 to 2 p.m. or 10, 10 to 1 p.m. and then Wednesdays 10 to, to 2 p.m. Um, you can also call me 707-630-2677. I mean, text me, not call me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and yeah, that's the that's the best way to reach out to me. Um, and if you have like mutual friends on Instagram, I'd be able to find them there. Um, I still can't find them on Instagram. So Geo one. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Geo one. Newsquake. You all are giving out way more information than I would feel comfortable. <laughs> so commend you on that. Um, but I will also be having some information coming out in the Lumberjack newspaper. It'll be our voter guide that will provide their candidate statement so you can read more about them as well. Um, so we did run over time a bit, so I want to both apologize and thank our next representative candidate who will be joining us. But uh, let's give a virtual round of applause or if you're here, a round of applause for our presidential candidates. Candidate Markham and Candidate Guerrero. Um, so let's bring forth Candidate Hernandez, who is running for the at-large representative. Um, the at-large representative is, we have two individuals who are running for it, but there are two positions open. So this is an uncontested position. So moving forward, all the future candidate positions are uncontested. Um, so they are just going to be doing a speech, but if there is any additional audience questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or the Q&A section. 
Um, otherwise, we will be asking them similar questions that we asked to our presidential candidates. Um, each candidate is scheduled for half an hour, but more than likely they will run quicker than a half an hour. Um, my guess is probably even quicker than 15 minutes. So we'll have breaks in between each candidate. Um, but again, thank you to our presidential candidates and candidate Hernandez, go ahead and join us, take a seat. Did you do the time? Okay. okay. So candidate Hernandez. Candidate Hernandez again is running for our at-large representative. Feel free to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you are running for this position. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Gerardo Hernandez. I am a freshman student with, um, I am seeking a political science major here at Cal Poly Humboldt. I am running to be your at-large representative because I want to lead, represent, and give students a platform to express their feelings and concerns to the Associated Students Board here at Cal Poly Humboldt. And um, I was wondering, um, if, do I have to, I give a speech, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I come from humble beginnings. Um, my grandparents crossed the U.S.-Mexico border to give opportunities for my family to prosper here in America. My grandmother is a huge inspiration for me. Um, she always cared so much for her community in Los Angeles County and would attend nearly every city council meeting um, because she valued the roots she pushed forth to my family. Throughout the four years in my high school, um, I participated in my high school debate. Not only did I have the opportunity to debate various of important topics involving um, important issues around the United States, I also learned the importance of advocate, advocacy and communication. If I am on the Associated Students Board, I will utilize what I have learned and use it for this position of at-large representative that I'm currently running for. As Cal Poly Humboldt becomes the first polytechnic university in Northern California, I applaud that our university wants to increase enrollment um, for the entire student body by 50% within three years. Although it's very important to recognize that our students continue to experience housing and or food insecurity. In 2018, a statewide study authorized by the California State University system showed that 19% of Cal Poly Humboldt students reported being housing insecure at least once. That is why if elected to be your at-large representative, I will advocate to the AS board to prioritize and addressing to expand resources towards students experiencing housing insecurity. It's also very important to communicate with our student food program, OSNAP. Like I have said before, our university is looking to expand um, our student body enrollment by 50% within three years. And I am interested in finding ways on how um, the Associated Students Board can help, um, can help um, communicate with OSNAP, um, such as by either increasing funding or expanding resources um, for, for this important student food program. Like, I, like I've mentioned, this is very important because um, it's a necessity for um, students um, to always make sure that um, they do not, um, they do not go, let, they, they are not left hungry. And while they're seeking their degree, they should be um, fed and not, you know, um, decide on like, oh, um, can they afford whether or not to eat during the day, during breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Um, then on the OSNAP website, it says that during the first six months of their grand opening in 2014, they had a thousand students visit them within you know, those six months. It's very important to always um, focus on valuing our student food program now more than ever, especially preparing to address to expanding to our uh, continuously expanding student body on the potential concerns of dealing with um, food insecurity. Um, that is why if you want to vote for someone um, that will um, um, always um, try to be transparent in the best way possible, then I encourage you to vote for me to be your at-large representative um, on this current Associated Students election. 
Okay, thank you for that was my speech. Wonderful, thank you so much. Are there any questions from the audience, either in-person audience or virtual audience? Okay. Any final thoughts that you would like to share? I think it's very important that we as the associated students um, overall, depending on the new leadership that we have to always try to communicate with our student body and to always try to see what ways um, can we continue our engagement. I know it's um, been hard, especially since um, the pandemic where um, a lot of students don't know um, about associated students. I've asked students um, during, I asked freshman students on if they know what the student body government is of associated students and they don't know. So I think it's very key as of right now for the new leadership to always try to see what ways can we try to um, be transparent with our student body on what we do and um, what are we going to be um, communicating to them on like, oh, this is what's happening in our board meetings, you know, because it's very important, especially since we're going to be expanding our student body um, by 50% within three years. There's going to be a lot of students who don't even know what associated students is. So I think it's time for um, AES to, um, you know, lead head on and try to see what ways um, can we address students' concerns, but also try to be transparent in community engagement here on campus. So you know, that's what my thoughts are. Wonderful. Well, thank you, candidate Hernandez. Just due to time, I'm going to go ahead and because we're running past about a half an hour late and we have candidate uh, Burns Young in the chat. So everybody give a round of applause for candidate Hernandez. We appreciate you being here. Um, keep your eye out for their information as well in the elections ballot. I'm trying to remember what it's called. What's in the lumberjack again? I said it earlier. Uh, yes, the, the voter's guide in the lumberjack newspaper. As a reminder, if you do have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A section. We will ask them to the candidates. So next up is going to be um, candidate Burns Young running for the student affairs vice president. Um, I'm promoting you to panelists right now, Tashane, so you should be able to accept it so that you can do your speech. Um, so for those who are in the room, I'm going to go ahead and turn off our camera and mute ourselves. Uh, but Tashane, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why you are running for the Student Affairs Vice President. Awesome. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Awesome. Um, so, hello, everybody. My name is Tasha Ney. I am a computer science major with a minor in German studies. Um, and what leads me here today is through um, the compassion for advocating and encouraging our student body. Um, it all started for me in middle school where I had attended um, Dr. Julian Nava Learning Academy, <laughs> Business and Technology. And with that, I, um, so I guess how I could say it is like, I, I, I am a foster youth. And so with this, I was able to take a system that was meant to kind of have like a, oh, yes. Oh, I didn't have my video on, sorry. Okay. I am unable to start my video. That's what I was thinking was happening. So let me see how I get it so you can turn on your video. My apologize. My apologies. Huh. Well. You might have to do it without a video. I'll keep playing around with it to see if I can. Oh, wait, I found it, I think. Does anybody remember how to do this in webinar? 
Oh, allow panelists to start video. You should be able to start now. Yay. Okay, my <laughs> apologies and thank you. Yes, for sure. Um, okay. I threw you off track. If you want to start from the beginning, feel free to do so. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, so like I said, um, I was, I am a foster youth. And so being a foster youth, I was able to first take a system that was meant to have a pipeline of like a pipeline to, um, how can I say it? it's like to disencourage students from being successful. And um, I was fortunate enough to have a foster mother who really instilled advocacy and instilled a sense of self uh, dignity within, within uh, the system and being able to advocate for the needs that I, that I need. And so with that, I was able to, um, how can I say, it's like there were so many uh, things that I did in high school and leading up to now. Um, and I want to say that I, I have spoken of in Sacramento uh, to a, a vast um, board of school districts about foster youth experiences in and outside of uh, in school. And so essentially it's making sure that all students are able to feel accepted regardless of their background. And the, um, and the one thing that I can remember is that just because somebody has a background, everybody wants to be accepted regardless of their background, regardless of their preferences. Because at the end of the day, we want our knowledge. We want somewhere to where we can feel accepted and welcome into that space, regardless on how different we are. Um, another thing, um, uh, what I have done uh, collaboratively uh, in high school was working on uh, the food deserts. So I lived in South Central LA. Um, and so there was a lot of like fast foods and such. And I I'm probably going all over the place, but it was my first time doing this, but please bear with me. Um, but so we worked on food deserts. And so what we were able to come up with is making, uh, partnering up with the um, uh, the Newton police station, which is in uh, South Central LA. And we were able to make a local uh, community garden so that everybody, all the uh, families every Tuesday, they'll be able to get fresh food, fresh grown and learn about nutrition, um, as well as talk about police brutality on how many students are not just students like community members have had uh, disputes with the police and kind of have this misconception of what the police is. And so with that, I wanted to bring to this position is the knowledge that I have about the co coalition working. I wanted to bring, um, how I want to bring a place where students can come to me via, I don't know, Discord or wherever, or if they see me in class, they could be like, hey, Tosh, I have a, I need help with this or something. And I want to be able to um, provide that resource to people. Um, that's a small little spiel, but I am definitely open to questions. Matter of fact, you probably get more answers from me out of uh, questions, but um, that's all that I have for right now. Thank you so much, candidate Burns Young. Um, do we have any questions from our audience, either virtually or in person? We have a question from in person. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're unmuted, go for it. So hello, candidate Burns Young. Um, one of my questions that I have is, what feelings and concerns do you imagine students would feel about Cal Poly Humble? Were you able to hear that all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, great question. I do feel that some of the uh, challenges that we may have had um, in attending Cal Poly Humboldt is, well, it's the ability to be aware of the resources, to be aware of how to get those resources as well as how to, I just had that, I just had an answer in my head and I 
it just lost me. But it's, um, can you repeat your question one more time? Because maybe that may help with it. Yes, so my question is, what feelings and concerns do you imagine students would um, feel or have about Cal Poly Humboldt? Okay. And I can write that in the chat as well. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, I think I, it came back to me. Um, some of the feelings that they may have have is the ability to kind of fit in and know where to fit in, if that makes sense, or to be, be comfortable with standing out. And, um, okay, uh, that, that's, let me see. Um, hmm. And then also being able to have the resources like I, like I was speaking about is to be able to have the medical, the, the health resources. And so what I'm currently working on is to um, make a plan where that we can reach out to local um, areas on in Arcata and such that will accept Medi-Cal because a lot of students are coming from different places that have Medi-Cal or they need the resources without having to drive either San Francisco or Santa Rosa. And so to be able to have that sustainability, there's the financial aspect, there's the like uh, there's the health aspect, there's the mental health aspect, meaning like Am I being represented or am I being told, oh, you're overreacting? And we need that space to have students to be able to reach out to associated students or reach out to someone that, or have associated students be that pillar or that bridge to reach out to those different resources that students can um, have access to. Does that answer your question? If it's not, that's absolutely fine. Oh yeah, that answered my question completely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions for candidate Burns Young, who's running for our student affairs vice president from either our audience or in the room right now? Okay, we got another question. So um, my final question is when, if elected to be a student affairs vice president, um, what are the goals that you hope to tackle during the 2022 and 2023 academic year? Yes, excellent, excellent. So what I do hope to tackle, because I am currently the um, elected stud uh, student uh, affairs right this semester and so what i'm doing for this semester is observing attending meetings to kind of like cultivate this uh year plan that i have an idea of and so within uh the student advisory committee uh sorry not the student advisor it's the student affairs advisory committee same thing but um <laughs> it's like i want to be able to bring all the components to the things that we're having on um, on campus, like such as the the health, the working with the trans uh, health awareness, working on the parking, working on other uh, working and one of personal thing that I want to work on is building a stronger foundation for associated students, because. Um, when I first started off in this position, I was the public relations officer. So I did with I dealt with a lot of oh getting feedback from the community. How do I promote this? How do I get people to come to these? And some of the responses are that I don't think AS is good enough, or I don't think they understand what we're trying to do, or um, kind of just like it just doesn't make sense to me, or some things are just they are left unanswered. And so I want to work in this position to further advance the promotion of student voice first rather than student agenda because with the student agenda we have seen that it can harm people and that's not what we're supposed to be that's not what i'm here for and so um with that i know like um i am a computer science major but my passion relies on helping people and so that's why like i had to um pass over the torch of being the president to work in something that i find it would really benefit every single student 
by being in a place where somebody can either relate to or having that space so that people can come to and be able to talk about those nitty gritty situations and feel like they're heard, not just listened to, but absolutely heard. And that those questions, the same very questions that you ask me, I will read, try my best to read it word for word verbatim to my board, to the board that if I am elected, to the board or my team, not just the board, the, the team, that you guys are heard. And I, I'm the kind of person that I mean what I say and that, yes, I may not say much, but when I do say something, I want to, I want it to stick and I want it to have meaning. I don't like to kind of like, you know, like kind of just go off on tangents. I want to be in a space where I can serve someone and that I understand that this position, it does have a title, but at the end of the day, I'm a student just like you. I have needs too, and so do you. And so within this position, I want to make sure that every student is heard, not just listened to, but heard. Wonderful, thank you, candidate Burns Young. Any final questions for candidate Burns Young who's running for student affairs vice president position, either from the audience or from the room? I just, I just wanted to say thanks, Tosh, and I'm, I really hope that you get the spot, and I really hope that I get to work with you because um, I think that we make a great team. So, awesome. great performance. And we do have a question from the audience: um, What does it mean to feel heard versus listened to? Excellent, excellent question. So, to feel, to be, I'm gonna just start off to feel, to be listened to. During our public comments, this is, this is an, uh, an example, during our public comments um, in our board meetings, we can choose to answer those questions. That's unfortunate, but we can choose to answer those questions or to ignore, meaning we listened to it, but we didn't do any action. Heard, I feel is an action word because you, you heard it and you're doing something about it at that very moment and as soon as you hear it. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, candidate Burns Young. Any final questions for candidate Burns Young? Okay, wonderful. I have one question for the audience. Yeah, go for it. Okay. What would you expect from me? Or what are some things that, um, in AS that you have seen and some things that you wanted to address, but at that moment, you just couldn't. So this is a question for our audience, both online and in person. What do you expect or what do you hope to see from your student affairs vice president? I could uh, chime in if I may. Um, that muted. Yeah, we're on mute. You're okay. good. Hey, Tosh. Um, yeah, actually, I got to experience some of your great um, capabilities and abilities in in pulling everybody together in that um, event that we had. We was a holiday, and you had all the gift stuff, and you you know we had watching the um, movie, and like that was super awesome. Like to see, so to see your like organizing skills and your abilities to bring folks together. Like I would love to see that. Like early and often as possible because um, that's the kind of energy we need is, is bringing everyone together um, in one place and, and um, connecting on that personal level um, again. So yeah, I really liked that. I thought you did really, um, an awesome job and I'd love to see more of that. Okay, and we had someone in the chat um, write down, I hope to see more transparency and communication, as well as genuine diversity. I feel like diversity at this uni university is used as a quota, so it would be nice to genuinely feel like there's representation that supports us and matters. Does anybody else want to respond to that question? I think it's on you. Okay, so for 
So for what I think just, just needs to happen, it's just um, just more community engagement, especially with our student body. Not a lot of people know essentially what the role of AES does or maybe even what the student affairs vice president does exactly. So I would think um, now would be a good time, even if you are elected for this position, um, it would be great for the next um, academic year um, to push that community engagement so the student body can be informed of what role do you um, play, and, um, no, what position are you, um, are you, and how will that affect the whole student body, or how will that may reflect um, the entire student body as well, too. Wonderful. Any, do we have any final questions for our candidate, either here in the room or online or any final responses to candidate Burns Young's question? Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you everybody. And thank you candidate Burns Young who is running for our student affairs vice president position. We appreciate you joining us today. Um, our next candidate that will be speaking is candidate Bell, who's running for a social justice, equity, and inclusion officer. Um, I believe candidate Bell is in this room. Um, and so why don't we have a quick four minute break um, because we have candidate Bell's time starting at 2.30. And so we'll come back together in the room starting at 2.30. Um, and in the meantime, get a drink of water, go to the bathroom, and we'll see you all in about four minutes.
Okay, thank you everybody again for joining us. It is 2.30 and we have candidate Bell who is gonna be running for a social justice and equity officer position here. Um, candidate Bell is joining us in the room, but feel free again, if you have any questions for the candidate to drop them in the chat or the Q and A function. Um, and we will be happy to read those out loud. So as all the speech sections go, the candidate has the opportunity to introduce themselves, tell us why they're running and provide a little bit of a speech. Um, and then we open up questions to the audience. Um, at that point, we will ask, the candidate will answer all questions that are in the chat or in the Q&A function. Um, any questions from candidate Bell before we begin? Okay, wonderful. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand the mic over, the theoretical mic, to candidate Bell, uh, who is again running for social justice and equity officer position. So hi everyone, before I get into my speech, I want to give you I want to give you a little background information about myself. So my name is Peyton Bell. I am 20 years old. I'm a third year student here at Cal Poly Humble. I was here before, before it was Cal Poly Humble. I'm, I'm a criminology and justice studies major with a minor in anthropology. I'm also in the Navy Reserves as a cryptological technician technical. Um, yeah. And um, I also have a mixed identity, which is Dutch Indonesian. And I often feel kind of lost because like, I don't fit in with like my white side of the family. And I also don't fit inside fit with my Asian side of the family. So yeah. Um, so getting into my speech, the reason why I am running for AS is because I believe a lot of our students do not get the opportunity to be heard about what they want from the school and what they need. I want to help be that voice for them. I want to have a conversation with my fellow peers about what they want to see in regards to our school to know how they are feeling and doing and to ask them, what can we do to make their experience better as a college student at Cal Poly Humboldt? In this role, I hope to uplift, sorry, uplift our, uh, sorry about that, our cultural centers and the program check-in. I want our students to know that these are great resources to go to and to even get involved in them. Our school does have really great resources that are available for students here, and I wanna see those organizations flourish. I believe that I would be a great candidate for this position because of the experience that I have gotten from being in my sorority, Delta Phi Epsilon, where I have been Vice President of Equity and Belonging for this semester. In that position, I have gotten to make sure all of my sisters feel equal and represented, along with hosting workshop nights where I get to teach my sisters on various topics. I had also opened up workshops to anyone on campus so everyone can have the opportunity to learn these topics. This semester, I have been able to present about the importance of black hair in a workshop on women's history. And we still have some more workshops in the making, which I love doing it because it allows me to teach my sisters on topics that they do not know much about. I was also involved in students' violence prevention program at Corando Rescues during my freshman year, where I got to learn about consent culture, boundaries, and about various cultures with a close group of people who eventually became some of my closest friends. And they are actually the reason why I'm running and I'm still at the school because I want them to have an even better environment to learn. That's, that's all of my speech. Wonderful. Thank you so much, candidate Bell. Um, so now we want to open it up to the audience, both in person and online. Do we have any questions from the audience for candidate Bell, who is running for social justice and equity officer position? Okay, so we have a few questions in the room. Um, We'll start here, go over here. So what uh, concerns do you believe that students may feel about Cal Poly Humble? Uh, there's a lot. Um, I know the parking issue is one that I feel very strongly about, but I know that's in the making for maybe a few years from now, but I feel like a big issue is not feeling represented, um, especially as students who are people of color. Um, I know I'm not really a person of color, but like my family, they're Indonesian, they're from third world country. And me as a mixed person who is very white passing, I feel very underrepresented because 
we don't have any resources for people who are white passing or any workshops for students to learn about that. So yeah, that, that's an issue that I would want to um, work on for the school. Okay. And we have another audience question right here. Thank you. I actually have a couple if there's not another one, but first one, um, I really wanted to um, hear how your serve first and foremost, thank you for your service. And secondly, um, how your service in the military has um, helped you become a better leader and how it will help you also progress and become even a more better leader in the future. Right? Yeah. Um, being in the Navy has definitely given me the confidence to take on so many different roles of being a leader at school and in my Navy unit. Um, I have, I've had to deal with a lot of higher ups who are like O4 is and above or E6 is and above. And the way I have to talk to them is in a very respectful manner when I'm trying to tell them that this is how we have to do something. So it's definitely also made me more mature in how I lead. Um, yeah, I'd say that the military has definitely matured me and I know how to appropriately lead people. Um, my second. Do we have any other questions from the audience, either online or in person? Otherwise, we will send it back to our in person question. Okay, take uh, so, um, <clears throat> I, you, Your um, story really um, is very um, interesting. I'd like to learn more about it. What, what is it like? to kind of have that internal, external conflict of being like half Indonesian, um, you know, having an Indonesian family, um, and then also, you know, having a different um, external appearance. And like, how do you deal with those type of like conflicting dynamics? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's very confusing. <laughs> um, it's hard because I have to deal with a lot of comments from my family, like um, my Oma, she likes to call me Whitey a lot, and she's like, you need some sun, and then like, and my dad, he just, he tells me all the time that I'm not white, I'm, or sorry, I'm not Asian, I'm just white, um, <laughs> so it's hard hearing that when like, that is my background, you know, um, but I just, I, go along with the jokes, I embrace it. I educate myself. Like I follow an account on Instagram, it's called Mixed in America. So they, they talk about their identities, about uh, how they're mixed and how they, they go about those obstacles too. So it's nice having that, um, that account to refer to and I see their quotes about what their lives are like also. And I'm like, oh, similar to mine, how I feel. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, candidate Bell. Do we have any other questions from the audience, either online or in person? I do. Okay, we've got another in-person question. Go for it. So this position, the social justice and equity officer, um, is supposed to be the chief advisor on diversity and diversity and equity. So for this position, um, if elected. What issues or um, topics would you like to um, tackle on in the 2023 through 20 or 2022 to, through the 2023 academic year? So, um, my sorority, I am the vice president of equity and belonging. So, I already get to tackle challenges like that. So, the way that I've gone about that is educating my sisters on topics. Like, uh, for example, I hosted a workshop on the importance of black hair and I opened up um, a dialogue about what we had just learned. And there is like, there is no discussion because my sisters, they did not really know about that topic and they were really appreciative that I, I talked to them about it. So I, I was struggling with that discussion because I was having to lead it along with a few of my sisters who did know some about that, some about that information, but, um, other than that, I really want to try and uplift our cultural centers so people of color can feel more represented. Wonderful. 
Thank you, candidate Bell. Any other questions for our candidate today, either from online or in person? Okay, wonderful. Any final closing statements, candidate Bell? Um, I do wanna say that this is my first time in student government. Um, and it's a learning process for me, but I'm really excited to start learning about it. I do have previous leadership experience that I do believe will help me out a lot in this role. But that is all I have. Wonderful. Well, thank you again. Thank you. Round of applause for candidate Bell. So we have a 20 minute break before our next candidate joins us, uh, candidate Gray, who is running for a legislative vice president position. So we're gonna go ahead and put our recording on pause. Um, so uh, candidate Gray, if you could introduce why you're running for this position and anything about your platform that you were running on. Um, so hello, my fellow students. My name is Thomas Gray and I'm originally from the Bay Area. I'm an African-American student majoring in criminology and criminal justice studies. I have been here at Cal Poly Humboldt for about three years now. I will be running for Associate Student Legislative Class President. My vision is to create a safe and healthy school community for all. I'm currently a Associate Student Board member. I previously held the position on the board as a College of Art, Humanity and Social Science representative. I had the privilege of being Student Government Vice President in high school. I am equipped with the tools and skills to properly advocate for students here at Cal Poly Humboldt. I have worked with other groups on campus to give feedback, to give back to Cal Poly Humboldt community and the, com the Humboldt County as a whole. Previous years, I worked in the African American Center for Excellence uh, here at Cal Poly Humboldt. I also worked as a peer tutor at St. Middle School and Eureka High School. I created a program here on campus called Public Safety and Law Enforcement Speaker Series, which I invite speakers from different locations around the world, country, including police officers, firefighters, teachers, um, high school teachers, college professors, everybody here on campus, and then invite high schoolers or middle schoolers to give a presentation to the kids about their career, why they should stay in school, and why is it helpful for everyone. I also work with a lot of students to create here on campus. My goal is to create more jobs on campus for students, help make help work with um, the university's official staff to make parking passes cheaper, help 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 create more diverse community, of, yeah, diverse community in the university. I have been exposed to a lot of leadership training and skills over the past few years. I believe I'm the most qualified to be elected you know, efficient legislative vice president in the student council. I work with the university on many occasions. I'm also on a few committees here on campus. If I'm elected, if I'm elected legislative vice president, my mission is to create, my, if I'm elected, I will cr create beneficial programs here on campus to support other programs that support and support other programs that already exist, such as African American Center of Excellence, El Centro, Native American Center, as well as other programs on campus. Some of the issues I will be tackling include healthcare, support, support for clubs on campus, job opportunities, on campus as well as creating a safe space for students of all background. If I'd be like to as a legislative vice president, I will work with each and every one of you, students, staff, and faculty to make our institution a better place, better space, a better environment to be. My vision, our vision an institution with good relationship between students, staff, and faculty. I care about each and every one of you, your rights, and how you should be treated fairly. So in my position as a legislative vice president, 
president, I will help make your some of your wishes or dreams come true with me advocating on behalf of you what student needs on campus, what student needs to be a better student, to be a better person here at the University of Calhoun. I ask nothing but your vote. I will deeply honor your vote, deeply honor you if you vote for me on election, on election day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Candidate Gray. Again, Candidate Gray is running for the legislative vice president position. So now we wanna open it up to our audience for questions. Uh, does our in-person audience or our online audience have any questions? Yep. Okay, we've got a question in person. So what feelings and concerns do you imagine our student body um, would have about Count Fort Humble? What do you mean when you say what feelings? Like what like concerns or you know um, anything like an issue that they have with our university? Like how do you imagine that you know what issues do you feel that what are some of the issues these our students have about the university? Well, it has been brought to my knowledge that some students get feel like they're being discriminated against because of their sex, gender, or race, or like hybrid they present themselves to the world. And some of them said they don't have a space place here on campus. So in with me being the new elected legislative vice president, I would invite speakers here on campus to give a presentation to speak to students of all races, ethnicity, and gender, and to absent student faculty are all welcome. Thank you, Candidate Gray. Do we have any other questions from our audience for Candidate Gray, who is running for our legislative vice president position, either on Zoom or in the audience? Yep, I have another question. So you say that, um, ad quote, some of the issues I will you know, be tackling include on student health care. Yep. I was wondering if you could give me more detail on how you will tackle this position. Like, what are some ideas do you have on tackling you know for student health care okay so for that like like me most of my fellow students here are from like the bay area south cal other location and some of us don't have health care but we can use our health care here at the cal poly humble health center and we, sometimes we can also use the health care like dental care in our kid Eureka because they refuse it so in my new role as a legislative fast President, I will work with the university to come up with a way or a plan where students will be able to use their, um, their health care here at the University Health Center or have the university partner out with some of the local dentist, dentist care, dental care, so students will be so students will use their dental care there and use their medical cards, places around here. Wonderful. Thank you, candidate Gray. Do we have any other questions for candidate Gray, who is running for a legislative vice president position? Okay, um, again, a reminder for our audience, we have all of our candidates, candidate statements in our voters guide that has come out in our Lumberjack newspaper. Um, candidate Gray is running for a vice president position of legislation. And this is currently an uncontested position. Um, any final closing statements, candidate Gray? Um, I just hope you guys vote on election day, make the best choice. Um, it doesn't have to be for me, it could be for anybody. Just make sure you're electing the right person for the job. Wonderful. And the person who has their university school community interesting heart. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, candidate Gray. So we are again on a bit of a break until our next candidate. Um, so we have candidate Chrisman, is that correct? Candidate Chrisman is here in the room, but we'll go ahead and take a little bit of a break to allow um, folks who might be here for candidate Chrisman's presentation. And so we'll begin that, we'll return to the room about 3.25, we'll, we'll go a little bit faster. So, um, Stick around for our next candidate, candidate Chrisman, who's running for administrative vice president, uh, starting at 325, 330. Otherwise we'll be on break till then. Thank you, Al.
Thank you everybody for joining us again today, both those in the Zoom world, as well as those who are in person with us here today. So we have candidate Chris Min here running for the administrative vice president position. Um, as a reminder, all of these are being recorded and will be posted online, uh, hopefully in the next couple of days, probably tomorrow. Um, but again, we have candidate Chris Min here who is running for administrative vice president. As a reminder about this process, we are going to allow for candidate Chris Min to do an introduction of themselves and why they're running for them, this position um, and a little bit about their platform. Um, and then we're going to open it up to questions from the audience, both in the Zoom world and in person. So for those on Zoom, if you do have any questions for candidate Chris Min, go ahead and drop them in either the chat or the Q&A section of this webinar. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and hand the mic over to candidate Chrisman, who is running for administrative vice president position. So candidate Chrisman, take it away. Oh boy, here we go. Anyway, hello all. Um, first, I'm gonna take off the mask, but that's okay with everyone. I uh, thank you for protecting my voice and being able to speak to all of you will be great. Uh, number two, uh, before I do my speech, I'm gonna filibuster a little bit because I know half the people on Zoom don't know what the administrative vice president role is. I don't think they know a lot of the roles. I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to state it out front. So I'm going to be the one to tell you what my role is, because I think it'd be smarter, because you can always read the elections packet, which is already is provided at the AS, at the AS uh, online and stuff. But I think it'd be per, uh, per great, but also um, essential in the sense of what I'm talking about, because I could be spouting a lot of nonsense. But I'm going to tell you the truth. So. I'm running for the administrative vice president role. What does that mean? The administrative vice president is the chief financial assistant to the president of uh, Associated Students and the chief financial ad advisor to the board. So one of the big things that come from the elected packets that I wanna highlight that I think would be in agreement that all of you should know is that in agreement with the AS executive director and appropriate budget administrator approves all expenditures of AS funds. So I will be in charge of dealing with all the uh, money and the allocations within AS and also uh, the uh, proposals of most of what will go on within AS. So those are the highlights from the administrative vice president that I want to tell you all about. I think that is the most crucial thing because I can give you a, a talking point of who I am and stuff, but I think it is more important to tell you what position I'm running for and to highlight that circumstance. So as I transition off of that, because who wants to read Mumbo Jumbo? Uh, I want to get into my perspective. So hello, everyone. My name is Sawyer Crispin, and I am a junior slash senior at Cal Poly Humboldt, or for the real OGs out there, Humboldt State University. Everyone loves that name. And I keep hearing it in conversation. So, you know, it's a great, great, great name. Uh, right now, I'm a, a communications major with a minor in inter international studies. I want to give context before running for this position. I was just a student, just like you, focusing on academics and really wasn't involved at Humboldt. And I think that was the mistake for at Humboldt State University, I think, or Cal Poly Humboldt, very uh, apologize for that. But I think that's where the mistake I did was, is that I didn't get as involved. I was very uh, inclusive, seclusive to what I do here. I wasn't really getting out, spreading my name. I was just focused on one thing. And I think, yet again, that is a great opportunity. I think opening all different avenues it would be better for me. So instead, in that moment, however, I want I, I however I kept wondering what events are happening. I wanted to be more involved. So that is why I decided to run for the position for administrative vice president. And I gave you the example of administrative vice president. So money, money, money. Uh, my goal for this position is simple. And there are three three uh, positions. One, bring back more of the student life through events and activities that promote many various avenues of Cal Poly Humboldt students. I can't. And I can't acknowledge and I, I don't have the people here to tell you that so many people don't know what's going on at Cal Poly Humboldt. I can tell you right here and now that the people don't even know what what's going on on Friday, what's going on on Saturday. I, I bet you we can go in the quad and ask people. And I think that's the problem. And I think not having the voice to present those activities and also having the funding to do those activities because we have the funding. We just haven't pro we just haven't done anything with it. I believe that with that if we elect the right student voices and we elect the right student officers, we can do so much greatness for Cal Poly Humboldt. But right now we're stagnant. I'll be honest, we are stagnant. 
So I think that one of the first one is to bring back more student life through events and activities that promote many various avenues of Cal Poly humble students. Second, keep all parties accountable. I swear that there needs to be accountability at this school. There can't be loose cracks in the floor or in the ceiling or anywhere. There needs to be accountability. And if you're held accountable, if I'm held accountable, I want to, I will set myself a standard and I will be there to put, if I need to step away or if I need to do something in, re in uh, reaction to something, I will do, do it as a candidate. But I also want that to be the same uh, or same actions as uh, for other candidates or for other people in power to have those accountability. Because if the, we don't have accountability, what are we doing here? What are we doing? So that's number two, have, have keep all parties accountable. Third, have better communication throughout the school. This is for administrators to students, staff, faculty to students, and students to students. I believe you, that, that you can put up a lot of promotions about an issue slash event, but if it's not thrown in the student's face, then they won't care. I think that if you don't talk to them personally on a one-on-one -on -one level or have tell, tell them like, hey, what's your name? Get to know them. It's not gonna, it's not gonna correlate to their mind. They're, they're not, they're gonna be like, oh, cool poster, goodbye. Oh, cool poster, I have class. Oh, cool, per, cool poster, cool advertisement. I, I, I don't know. I have 101 million reasons why I'm not going to go to the event. And I think that's the saddening part is that I think we need to, we need to have better communication and actually talk to each other. I know like this, this is coming off a lot more often now. People are not wearing them in classes and people are becoming more, coming back to what is the quote unquote normal. It's not going to be normal. It's going to be the new evolved normal. And I think at this point, we need to, re, we need to, re, need to redevelop and have better communication. And I think that it is, that, that is the big issue at hand. Okay, look, all of you heard it. Everyone hears it through each candidate, what various qualifications I have. I don't think, I really think that I can tell you my life story. It'll be, uh, it'll be advantageous. It'll be, ex it, I don't know, you've heard it. I feel like if you haven't heard it, talk to me afterwards. I really don't, I really could not care about my qualifications because the biggest thing is, is that actions speak louder than words, uh, than words, yes. I can tell you like, oh, I did this, oh, I did that, and what I did within it. And I can tell you the great parts about it. And then if you want, I can tell the bad parts, how we communicated and how we did well within that, within the organization that I was a part of before. Pop, it, it, it's great. But I think what, what I want to issue it now is that anyone can have qualifications. I think it is what they do with those qualifications and what action they bring to the table stands out to them much more. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm wanting to make a change on this campus with the other leaders on campus, not just AS. I want other leaders from all around the clubs, from leaders that we don't know about, that are just hiding away. I hid away. I was a leader before, but I hid away. I want to talk to everyone. I want to get to know them. I want to see what they have to offer, and I want them to do what we can for Cal Poly. My main topic such issue I want to tackle as administrative vice president is student representation and accountability trying to do something for the students by the students. If you can vote for me as your administrative vice president, cool. If you don't, if you don't like what I'm doing, cool. Vote. That's what I'll say before we go to questions. Vote. That's super important. Yep. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, candidate Chrisman. As a reminder, candidate Chrisman is running for administrative vice president position. So now I want to open it up to our audience, both through Zoom and in person, for any questions they may have for candidate Chrisman. Okay, we've got an in-person question. Go for it. So what concerns do you imagine students will have about Cal Poly Humble? Good question, because this, uh, this question has probably been asked multiple times. And I don't know, if, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a journalism slash politics person right now. Um, one I wonder what you're aiming for. And two, there's a whole spectrum of things wrong with things going on at Cal Poly Humboldt that people have uh, troubles with. I don't think I can I can handle, I can target one little aspect because there's multiple that people have having uh, have um, trouble with. Uh, I'll name a couple just to make bygones be bygones, but I think there's a whole lot of issues. Housing, big housing issue. Everyone's uh, getting annoyed at housing. Two, representation of people, representation of everyone at campus. Three, 
being able to express yourself and what you stand for at this campus. I think those three would be the biggest ones, um, not the only three big ones. There are other big ones, but I think those are the big three. Okay. So we, we have an interesting anonymous question from the audience. And I'm going to leave it to you to determine if you want to answer it or not. Um, in fact, I would probably, the beginning of it, I'm going to adapt a little bit. So tell us how you do with math and what is the highest course you have taken? So how do you do academically with math? Um, and what is the highest math course you have taken? Ooh, that's interesting. Okay. I have a feeling this is probably connected to the fact that as administrative vice president, you're dealing with the budget and financials. So the question yeah. is connected back to that. I, that's what I assume. I would love to hear the original question. <laughs> it, it just is, what are your grades in math? I don't think oh, you need okay. to share what your uh, grades are though. Bro. <laughs> a good question, I will say. Um, so with math in the sense of things, I believe that one, my grades were, I think all around, it was all A's and B's in math. The highest I got to was uh, statistics. Uh, I'm not an engineer. I am. I didn't go to STEM route, so I didn't go to calculus one, two, or three. If that's what you're looking for, I think that is. If they, if people can do that, claps for them because I'm a little, little not there yet. But I, my highest math is uh, statistics, um, and my grades were good. And yeah, I think with uh, the administrative vice president role, uh, it is like basic algebra. I think that we, we need to think about it like adding, subtracting, multiplying, division. Um, we also need to make sure that we allocate funds correctly and appropriately to each area of funding or each areas that need funding. So I definitely think, uh, I'll definitely have a, an eye for if there's a, if instead there's an addition or a multiplication, I would see that there's a difference between that. So I feel like that's where, where, I, where I'll be great. I'll be good at with math. So, are you a Keynesian or, or a follower of Milton Friedman? Ooh, um, <laughs> the question was, are you <laughs> okay? I got a handshake to a no. That's so like, I was like, like what are, are we gonna follow the Austrian school of economics or? <laughs> uh, 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 um, so uh, let me let me get back to you in three to five business days. Cool. So we do have another question from the audience. Um, off the top of your head, what activities or events would you consider bringing to Humboldt, acknowledging our funding, and what are students truly like? So what events or activities would you bring to Humboldt, um, taking into consideration funding and the actual student interest? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I believe, so I, I will state this outright because I'm not in the position yet. I have not seen the funding we have. I, I do not, I cannot uh, say if we do. Uh, we have the uh, other administrative vice president here and I am looking at him right now, just giving him a hopeful looks um, that he would just slip me a piece of paper that would tell me the budget, but you know, I don't think he will. Um, so in the terms of in budget, I don't know what we have, but for events and activities, I, I think we need to uh, we need to have both uh, sustainable and uh, environmental activities, but we also need the opposite side. So I don't know where that would look. I feel like having uh, students vote on what activities they'd like to see at Humble at Cal Poly Humble. Uh, like, do you want a video game tournament? Do you want um, uh, do you want a lecture series? Do you want uh, a TED talk series? Do you want like, uh, do you want to do like uh, how to build like how Home Depot used to have these little kid activities where you could build things. Um, and that would be cool enough to bring because we, I feel like a lot of us use our hands for typing, but if we be uh, very much more uh, hands on, we can definitely do something cool like that. Uh, in the terms of environmental and sustainability, I know a lot of students are very uh, uh, pro plan. Uh, and pro uh, gardening. So I definitely would want to do some activities in that realm. So like uh, doing a uh, come by and uh, see what plants we're growing or see what you could see what you like to, to grow in your own house and see how sustainable and how easy it is um, in that sense. So those are where those are where my avenues are. I don't have all the answers, but that's where I'm looking towards. But I'm open for new suggestions. Wonderful. Well, thank you, candidate Chrisman.
We have another audience question here. Go for it. Just to make sure and respond to your um, request as you may become the new ABP if elected, would you be interested and willing to set aside time to help guide you into such a position if you do get it? Um, so you have a full understanding spectrum once you step into that role, if you so do. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, the now Mr. Vice President. Um, I am on camera, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> but off camera, I will state that we'll joke around and I'll be like, we'll, we'll have we'll have banter next to each other. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I would love to have uh, a colleague and a definitely uh, definitely an, uh, inspirator for me running in this election. Definitely would love to pass the reins or just tell me what what I need to know. I feel like that'd be very. Uh, very best for the incoming AS. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Yes, we've got another question here for candidate Chrisman. Go for it. So, if you are elected to be administrative vice president, you know, you've mentioned a lot about trying to be more active on community engagement. So, if you are administrative vice president, what are some ways? Um, that you plan to be vocal to the student body about what's happening in our student government. Okay. Um, actually, uh, besides from what I know and from what I can give is that I know that there is always AS board meetings that are open to the public that people can go to and uh, get information there and the AVP, the uh, president, LVP, and every other position can give their uh, positioning and their uh, tell the students what's going on. Uh, but I don't know of any other, like besides office hours that you guys, uh, that you all run, uh, for, uh, that you all have for students if they have any questions or things that are going on. Um, I think it would be appropriately uh, good if we can set up a, another time where we have a general session or a general assembly for all students within Cal Poly. So it's not super like political or it's not super like formal. It's not uh, an AS meeting with all the direct board of directors. I think it's more like one uh, individual or two individuals uh, present the board's uh, agendas to the students or uh, give a synopsis of what we're thinking and uh, love to hear your words. And also having it hybrid would be also best in this case, because I believe that in the world that we're living in, I think hybrid is always best. So that's where I would stand is just having like a general assembly or just having another meeting that that someone can uh, run or that can advise to run to help propagate the word and also just talk to the students. Wonderful. Do we have any other questions for candidate Chrisman? I hope not. I, hope I have one more question. Okay, we've got another question for candidate Chrisman. Um, but actually, before we get to that one, we do have one from the audience. Um, how do you plan on connecting with the students, especially with getting the event out? Ooh, connecting with students. That's always, hmm, that's a good one. I feel like that's a very good question to ask uh, in the sense of things. Because in my speech, I did say you can't really put up flyers, you have to hit them, not hit them, but you have to put, you have to, uh, per, uh, um, you have to go up to them and propose like, hey, this, this, there's an event going on, like, hey, we should do something about this. So I, for connecting with the students, that's going to be more of an interesting challenge. I don't, I can't 100% have an answer for you because I can say, I can tell you that I'm going to go on social media and post on the AS account or post on my main account and tell people like, hey, I'm coming to this or I'm going here, meet me here in the library or set times or set hour, office hours and stuff. Um, or, and, or I could do like, or I could try to do other things, but I don't have, I, specifically, I don't have, I don't have an idea set forth to try to communicate with the students. I feel like that is the one thing I need as and as your administrative vice president, I need to work on. I need, I would love to hear him put more on, on the issue, but I don't actually have an answer for you. I'm very I apologize. Thought I could come up with one, but I don't think I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to answer to give you a, a falsified answer. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you, candidate Chris Men. And we have one more question from the audience here. So you mentioned um you mentioned that you want to work, you know, you want to work, um, especially for 
to get the word out and try to communicate and collaborate with like student leaders that are hidden that don't you know usually are outspoken so like what are some ideas do you want to collaborate and um for the AS4 to try to work with these types of student leaders that you say are hidden fair um i did i definitely did say hidden in the sense of things i feel like definitely having um having more i feel like as could uh could always put out more um uh, uh, for, uh what is this not not quizzes but like more of a open format uh poll or uh some form of try to transparency uh document more of like polls um, just be like, hey, what are your thoughts on this? Hey, what are your thoughts on this? And yet again, I know having another email thrown at you is the best policy, but definitely uh, if you have, if we have time, we definitely want to uh, have something in the Student Activity Center where we can ask students directly that are there that are just per, uh, doing just either homework or doing uh, shooting pool or doing some kind of activity that isn't really that I could, we could step to them and be like, hey, I have a question for you, or hey, can you uh, can you answer these simple questions or a poll, have them talk and see if they can give us suggestions or anything in that sense. So in that sense, I would hope for like a poll system. Uh, other things can be implemented of just being very um, open about like having a forum or just talking in general. I feel like that's always the best part. But yet again, I do uh, I do think it's uh, finding them in the environment or finding them in the in the and out in the quad or out in the SAC is the most important because they're going to be they're they're going to be there. They're going to be like, okay, what's going on? And they're going to be open to uh, anything that we that AS tries to do. Hey, any final questions for candidate Chrisman, who is running for the administrative vice president position? Okay, thank you so much, candidate Chrisman. Um, before I let you off, do you have any final comments? Uh, final comments, uh, vote. I believe that I can stand here and tell you the vote for me, vote for me, vote for me, but I don't think it really is coming down to that situation. I think right now, as the AS is rebuilding the fundamental structure that it wants to be for the future, and I want, I want, I hope for the best for AS, and I'm trying, I want to work with AS to make it better, bigger, and better than it ever is. I think voting is the main priority. I could care less if you vote for me. I want you to vote for AS. Wonderful. Thank you again, Candid Christman. Again, Candid Christman is running for the administrative vice president position. Um, you can read all of our candidate statements in the elections. What's the name of that thing again? The no that the elections guide, which is in your uh, lumberjack newspaper. So make sure to check that out. We will reconvene at 4 p.m for a presentation from candidate Taylor, who is our other candidate who's running for that at large representative. As a reminder that large position, there are two positions that we are bringing on. So this is an uncontested position, even though we have two candidates. So I'll be back here in about seven minutes. Okay, thank you, Candidate Taylor, for joining us today. So Candidate Taylor is running for our at-large representative. As a reminder, this is an uncontested position. We have two candidates running for the at-large representative, and we have two openings for this position. So uh, as a reminder of how the structure works, uh, the candidate will introduce themselves, why they're running for this position, and anything else they'd like to share, such as their platform. Um, so without further ado, candidate Taylor, take it away. So I am not a politician. Uh, I am a longtime local uh, digital designer. I was born in Humboldt and my name is Sebastian Taylor. Um, it takes some time in the past semester to visit just one associated students meeting I noticed just how many roles were vacant. Um, this was a concern to me. 
not only as a local and a student, but knowing that the university is beginning its transition into a polytechnic. And it is utilizing a state grant that amounts to around 7% of the entire GDP of Humboldt County. And associated students in its vitality is paramount as the keystone organization between the administration and the students. And furthermore, this state grant is an immense endowment upon us. And the decisions made in transition are gonna have lasting effects on the students, the locals in the community, and ultimately the efficacy of this institution. So in the role of at-large representative, I would be able to represent the student body as a whole. And I would be able to fight or take part in whatever initiative that we feel is most pertinent as the student body. After the digital, after we all went digital and the COVID pandemic, the most pressing issue in my mind is reconnecting the associated student representatives with their constituency. And that's where this role really takes its significance. So my biggest initiative, no matter what role I am in at this university or in this community, is connecting my fellow students or community members to the positions that empower them. So I believe my attitude as a Black local student supporting myself is very necessary in translating the ideas of the student body to the associated students in this historic transition. So lastly, just to give a brief example, some brief examples of my history and associated students. In high school at St. Bernard's Academy in Eureka, I was sophomore class president and I was also the social media concierge my junior year. Um, furthermore, I started and founded the current events club my sophomore year and subsequently my junior year founded the social media club, which was the first club to connect the associated student body, the school social media page and a student run club. Um, so lastly, I just wanna say, I'm looking forward to utilizing my experience at St. Bernard's Academy, as well as my growing expertise as a digital designer to implement innovation by reconnecting the student body with their institution and each other. Thank you for your time. Thank you, candidate Taylor. Again, candidate Taylor is running for at-large representative position. We have two positions available and two candidates running for those two positions. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to the audience for questions. Do I have any questions in the audience? Go for it. So what concerns do you imagine our student body would have about that? Um, that's a good question. I think uh, I, most of the students are probably going to have a lot of similar concerns. I think we're you know, all a lot alike and uh, a lot of core ways. And I think ultimately it's understanding what's going on at your university, especially when there's so much going on in a massive transition and as well as potentially getting a better understanding of who is in there, who is representing them in the associated students specifically. And just really cementing those relationships, I think is gonna be my most um, the big, the biggest concern that maybe some students don't even necessarily know that they should be concerned with, but also I think the the goal of my role as at large representative is recognizing the relevant ideas or concerns that students have. So I'm not going to say that I know what students you know are concerned about, but as soon as I you know get into the role, if voted into the role, we'll be you know, implementing ways to 
for students to advocate for themselves and for me to advocate for their ideas and associated students. Thank you, candidate Taylor. It looks like we have another question from the audience. Go for it. Thank you very much. That was a wonderful speech. Um, <clears throat> being a local um, of the community here, one, what do you think is important, or why do you think it's it's of great importance to, if you do, to connect um, the un university, the students of the university with the local community, and um, um, also being a local from Ar um, Arcata, how do you think you, that leads to, or tends to be an advantage to you to help maybe do that, or? Right, I think I, think I can kind of answer both of those questions with like one central kind of premise, and that's the, like, as a kid growing up, I would I would be going to theater shows at the Van Dusen. You know, I would be walking around the campus with my cousin and my brothers, going to the football stadium to throw around the football, or actually played football games in Redwood Bowl, you know, on that field and have experiences kind of just being here apart from being a part of the university. And so just being able to see the I think you are really able to see the university for what it is from a local perspective. And so ultimately it's really about integrating local people into the university more, as well as university students into the community and just kind of getting a, what um, I'm learning is dual integration instead of like a vertical or horizontal integration in any sort of direction. But a dual integration really can make both sides flourish in a way that you know is mutually beneficial um yeah, I, I like that my friend i might use that word dual integration yeah. i like that Please, yeah more it's, it's, it's a newer idea i think it you know I like so it. it's a lot of what we're all getting at in, in a lot of our speeches yeah i like that wonderful well thank you candidate taylor any other questions for candidate taylor i don't have any questions before so what are some departments, clubs, or organizations would you want to um, communicate with and try to see uh, how AES could uh, be of service to them? Um, I really think I liked what uh, candidate Markham said about um, involving and balancing out the growth of our technical departments with the growth of our arts departments. You know, I have just as many memories um, from my local perspective of, you know, the sciences and, you know, the biology and the botany of the university as the arts. And I think they're both equally as value. And I, and I think they both, you know, can play an integral role in, in growing together. So I think really I'm an art student and I think bringing my perspective from the arts department and holding down a strong representation of how that can play a role in growing a polytechnic university, um, looking to references from the past and also, you know, pulling from examples that have mixed, you know, uh, technical studies and arts studies to um, really, yeah, level up not only the you know, polytechnic side of the university, but you know, the whole university in a balanced way. But more specifically to your question, I think um, whether it's a project of, you know, a mural or a project of legislation, I think getting advice and getting as many departments as well involved as possible is going to make the university feel a lot smaller and really get more students just naturally engaged in kind of what we're doing as associated students. Wonderful. Thank you so much, candidate Taylor. Any other questions for candidate Taylor? Again, candidate Taylor is running for the at-large representative. You can read all about their candidate statement in our voter's guide, which you can find in the Lumberjack newspaper. I have one more question. Go for it. So what are some ways, if elected to be at-large representative, will you, what are some ways, can, what are some ways that you'll be transparent to the student body of 
what's going on in associated students? That's a good question. I think ultimately there needs to be new systems set up now that we've kind of come into this digital age and we've had to integrate our entire university into a digital space through COVID, we kind of need to, you know, reevaluate some of these systems of communication that we use as associated with students. And I think part of that as a digital design student is creating a new identity for associated students. I think it's really outdated. Um, I think it can be changed, it can be evolved. Um, it, it needs to have a, a new sense of communication of community as well as communication and embedded within the actual visual identity of associated students. And that means the way that the posters look, the way that, you know, the social media looks like these are all new forms of how we think of identity as designers. And it need, we need to bring that to, you know, associated students in a way that can, you know, make a student who doesn't know about associated students kind of pay attention and look, or at least understand the immediacy of what's going on here. Okay, we've got another audience question. Go for it. Uh, the at-large representative will have to travel a lot um, to the meetings uh, based on the CSU um, associated students and other events. Are you comfortable with traveling around the state? Yes, I am a California native. I love California. Actually, during the spring break, I drove all the way to Las Vegas. My brother is having a kid. I'm going to be an uncle. Um, congratulations to me. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I love traveling through the state. Honestly, I drive often during breaks down to the Bay Area anyways. Um, I have family down there. I have a lot of friends down there. So I think, yeah, it would add to my experience as a college student having kind of something a little bit more structured as well to accomplish on those some of those trips as well. Wonderful. And we have a question from the audience in the Zoom world. What are some goals of yours to change the systems of communication? That's a good question. Um, very, very broad. Like that brings a lot of ideas to mind for me. I think first and foremost, it's just being able to being able to put ourselves in front of the face of you know the student body a lot more I think is really my biggest goal and then with that it's you know finding ways to from the other direction get some of this um, beautiful endowment to the places that we we need to go so I think there's a lot of systems that are going to potentially need to be built from the ground up in order to get clubs and organizations, you know, the funds and the, the communications that they need. But um, right now, I, I don't think I have the, the knowledge base of, you know, what's to come to be able to really outlay, I think, what I'm going to have to do. But regardless, I think it's just going to be a lot of communication with, you know, a lot of interdepartmental communication, a lot of interdisciplinary communication, and then just making sure we have a lot of communication within associated students that's healthy and effective. Wonderful, thank you so much, candidate Taylor. Any other questions for candidate Taylor who is running for our at-large representative? Okay, so candidate Taylor, any final comments or thoughts that you wanna share? Um, final thoughts, I would just say I'm going to keep with the, the grain of just vote. Um, there's a lot of big changes coming to Cal Poly Humble as well as just the immediate area around it. Um, yeah, if you're a student here or a local here, you should be aware of kind of what's going on because this is, this is a historical time and um, I urge everybody to be as involved as possible. Wonderful, thank you so much, candidate Taylor. Well, we do have a uh, candidate Mark in the waiting room. We will have a five minute break and we'll reconvene at 4.20, so 10 minutes prior to the time certain for candidate Mark. Um, unless you have any objections, candidate, uh, sorry, candidate Bouguera, uh, feel free to drop that in the chat. But 
Let's go ahead and give candidate Taylor, who's running for at-large representative, a round of applause. Thank you, candidate Taylor. Um, we will reconvene at 4.20 p.m. Um, with our final candidate, candidate Bulgera, which is the environmental sustainability officer candidate. And we'll go ahead and do an intro. So I wanna thank Mark for joining us today. Uh, candidate, uh, is it Bulgera? Yes, it is. Okay, so candidate Bulgera is running for environmental sustainability officer. Um, this is an uncontested position at this time. So the structure for this conversation today is you're gonna introduce yourself, tell us why you're applying for, why you've applied for the environmental sustainability officer position, and tell us a little bit about your platform and what you hope to do within your role. And then we open it up to the audience. We have both an in-person audience and a virtual audience. So we open it up to them for questions. Um, at which point after all questions are done, you'll give a closing statement and then you're good to go. So Kande Bugera, go ahead and um, introduce yourself. Tell us why you are running for this position and a little bit about your platform. So, um, hi everybody. My name is uh, Mark Bugera as previously introduced. Um, I am ap applying to um, get the Office of Environmental Sustainability Officer because I believe in um, a clean green campus for us currently and for future generations that choose to attend um, Cal Poly Humboldt. And I am a thorough believer of student participation in that, um, in that progress as we try to achieve zero, a zero waste campus and be a role model for all other campuses to see and follow. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Candid Bulgara. Is there any questions that we have for Candid Bulgara? Um, you can either drop it in the chat, the Q&A section, or do we have any from the audience? Okay, we have a question from the audience. Go for it. Sorry. Sorry, Sorry I muted ourselves. Go for it now. Okay. Um, what um, concerns do you imagine um, our student body would have about Cal Poly Humboldt? Um, concerns, um, concerning, um, what in particular, I'm sorry. Any issues that they may have? Oh, okay. Um, currently I think, um, cause during my experience with associate students in the past and currently, um, I think our biggest, um, uh, obstacle is, um, just getting back on track and putting our focus on the students and their needs and what they're saying and making sure that the um, associate students is, is just that, a place where students can be heard and where they can feel represented for the entire college. Thank you, Candid Bulgera. Do we have any other questions from our audience, in person or virtual? We just got one from the Zoom world and then we'll head back to in-person. So a Zoom question we have for you. How do you plan on handling or providing insight in plastic bottles on campus? And I'll drop that question in the chat as well. Plastic bottles, yes, they are... Uh... Like um, I am probably a necessary evil in the way, and that's like that's some hyperbole in the case. It's a huge metaphor. They're not evil, of course, but they are very bad for the environment, as we all know, because they don't ever go away unless they sit there for thousands of years alone, which is not part of our lifetime. And I, if it was up to me, I would easily make the choice for the campus not to do to not to, to do away with them us not have to use plastic bottles anymore but the sad reality is that we have to use them because the it's just a necessary thing in our life and we can't just upright get rid of them i wish we could but in my time as an officer 
for the sustainability. I'd like to see us um, associate, associate students promote and help engage students in recycling and possibly even incentivize students, organizations, or everyone on campus really to recycle in some way. Because um, we hear it every day that recycling is good for the environment, but um, some people do need that extra kick to like to get them up and to actually throw things in the blue bin. And I think it's, um, I really want to make that a goal while I'm in office, if I do win. Thank you, Candid Bulgara. Any other questions from the audience? Okay, we've got another question in person. So my question is for the environmental sustainability uh, position, um, what are some um, ways do you want to uh, make sure natural resources are utilized um, while you're in this position for the 2022 through the 2023 academic um, year? Great question. Um, for me, I make sure that the campus is following its um its sustainability um strategic plan. I believe until twenty twenty six, and make sure that student voices are heard and ch the necessary changes are made so that we can keep um keep our path on to that um that zero waste um campus and to make sure that we are utilizing our resources such as um, solar, solar power, wind power, and especially in Arcata, as we've all seen, um, the rain and water, making sure that's all put to good use, especially while California's in a drought. And it's great that, our, that steps have already been taken in the right direction for the um, buildings to reuse and recycle rainwater for their facilities. So I, much not a change that I do to the current plan, but make sure that we are following that strategic plan. Wonderful, thank you, Candy Pozera. We have another in-person question, go for it. Good to see you, Mark. I'm glad that you um, are here with us and I hope to be working with you um, next year. Um, so I wish you the best of luck, my friend. I did just want to ask real quick, um, what do you think maybe uh, like something similar to like the Aussies, but for um, cups or something like that, for like coffee or soft drinks and the different dining facilities might be something that we could try to promote or mason jars maybe that are rewashable, um, you know, in the, in the cafeteria. Like, do you think maybe something like that might be a good idea to explore? Yes, I think that's a great idea. And thank you, Chase. And I, again, I'd like to reciprocate. I hope to be working with you in the future as well. And these are just some great ideas that especially the, the way the Aussie um, food trays have already gone. They, I do believe personally, they do need more um, uh, promotion, especially with the way they are handled and collected. Because um, we've all seen it. If you live on, I lived on College Creek and I used to see um, the bushes and um, the cement um, barriers like piled on with these Aussie trays because there's no real collection place, you know, nearby, except, you know, walking in and giving it to the marketplace. And so I would like to see, you know, changes be made for it to be more efficient, more student friendly, and for students to be more aware that um, they can give these back and they can be reused for future use and not to keep them in their room or throw them away, et cetera. So I do believe that the campus is on a, it's on a, it's on a great path while with using these recyclable, um, you know, trays and uh, utensils. And I hope we build upon this to, like you said, like with the mason jar idea, that's a great idea in general. And I hope um, that idea is heard and we do, make changes necessary to get something adopted similar to that for the campus. Thank you, candidate Bulgara. Any other questions for our candidate? Okay, 
Um, would you like to make any closing statements? Um, yes, I would. Um, so, um, I believe that there is a lot of change or not really change to be made, but just more support for environmental sustainability on campus. And, and this doesn't just apply to um, plastic bottles or the trash, making sure bins go in the same bins. I believe this applies to um, housing, um, uh, facilities, buildings, frameworks, and the way we spend our, you know, our funds to make sure that in the future, our campus is sustainable, it's cost efficient, and it's a zero waste and low and zero emission campus. So I hope everyone hears what I'm saying and chooses to vote for me. And so my voice can be heard and I can reciprocate my, um, my peers' voices at my peers' voices as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So again, as a reminder for everybody, all candidate statements can be found in the elections guide. My gosh, I keep bringing that. Uh, the elections guide, which can be found in the Lumberjack newspaper. So thank you everybody for attending today. We will have these posted online, hopefully by tomorrow. So hold on.